Well, and first of all, I grew up, as I said, in Danville, Virginia, which was racially segregated. And uh, we, of course, uh, the, the African Americans were not permitted to ride streetcars, you know, except in the back. Our families opposed it, so that meant that we didn't, uh, we didn't ride the, those streetcars, we didn't ride the buses either. We would walk, we had to walk. However, there were other things that, we, of course, we, they were racially segregated and we had to, had to accept. It was doing that, and we, because we, our parents, we obeyed the laws, but we did not accept it, and we were trained. Of course, we had to get an education, we had to get a college education, and it was during that time at, at Hampton that I decided that uh, laws were, of course, being attacked then, but I was going to be a lawyer, and I was going to help change it, and I was going to work to change it. Well, first of all, the, some of my experiences were reflected by the fact, well, actually, were, not only was African American, I was a female, and there were not many lawyers who were female at that time. In fact, I was, there was only one other uh, African American woman who was practicing law in Missouri, and that was Margaret Bush Wilson. But uh, she was not, her, she was very actively engaged in, in the practice, but she was not a civil rights lawyer. And so I had uh, joined um, had two other lawyers who were at, very active with the NAACP and told them that I would be available to work with them on any civil rights cases that the NAACP encountered, and that's what happened. And in addition to the, the general practice that I was involved in, I was uh, joined them in my first civil rights case in 1949. It takes everybody working on various different areas, various, various patterns. There's no one way, no one goal, no one path, no one road. We all need to take all of the paths and work all the, uh, as well as we can, on, in every way we can, to get there. When I opened my own law office, and uh, the first person who came into the office, and it was a Jeff in Jefferson and Franklin on the second floor of the Jefferson Bank, Bill, Jefferson Bank Company, but at that time it was at Franklin and, uh, and Jefferson. But the first person who came into my office after I had, my, my sign was on the window, Frankie Muse Freeman, attorney at law. And so the person, man came to the office looking for a lawyer. And I said, and, and, and I'm, I'm a lawyer. I don't want a woman, and that, so there were people in the beginning who did not want a woman lawyer. That case was Gruden versus the Board of Education. The, of course, it's, at that time the schools were racially segregated. The, uh, the schools, Washington Technical, was for black students, and Rankin and uh, Hadley was for white students. They announced in 1949 that in, they were going to have a course in airplane mechanics at Hadley. And the Bruton brothers were all excited about the fact because they were interested in airplanes. And so when they announced that it was going to be at Hadley, they said, well, they wanted to go there. Their father, of course, knew that it was, that the Hadley was for white students only. But anyway, because they wanted to go, he, he decided he would take go down and find out. Of course, the answer was no. Went to the board, and the answer was no. And then they came to this, uh, us, the civil rights lawyers, and so we, of course, filed suit in St. Louis Circuit Court, challenging because they had a course in airplane mechanics at, a, at the white high school, but not, and, and denied them admission, but no course, such course at Washington Tech, um, technical. The court in St. Louis decided in favor of the plaintiffs because they could not, the law required at least if it was going to be segregated, it had to be equal. So then uh, they appealed to the Supreme Court. We all traveled to uh, Jefferson City and the case was argued. The same Supreme Court again said you cannot, St. Louis Edu Board of Education could not have a course in airplane mechanics at Hadley and denied admission to the black students and they would have to at least be treated equally. 
So the Board of Education then closed down the course in airplane mechanics at Hadley. In 1957, 1957, the first civil rights case, U.S. civil rights case was, was uh, enacted after the since the Civil War. And the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights was, was established to at least work to end uh, this racial discrimination. It provided for six commissioners. And from the beginning, there had that, there was at least one black on, on the, of the six commissioners, but always a male. In the meantime, I had been active in, not only in, but in uh, civil rights cases, but, but also I've been also in, active in Democratic. So um, when um, they came, there was a, a vacancy that came up, and uh, President Kennedy had announced when he was elected that he was going to appoint more women to public positions that would, that would require confirmation by the, by the Senate. In the meantime, uh, of course, after that, President Kennedy's assassination, then President Johnson became, pre uh, was, was became president after the assassination. And he committed himself to doing the same thing that President Kennedy had announced. And so I was recommended and uh, I had been at the White House the week before his assassination to meet with, uh, concerning President Kennedy. But then President Johnson nominated me, accepted the recommendation from President Kennedy, and nominated me. And I, following my confirmation by the Senate, I served uh, for 16 years. I don't think I could do anything else. I think everybody should be an activist. You work to make a difference. You, if you, you should, if there's something you see that's wrong, you should try to do what you can to change it. That's my purpose. We were put here for a purpose. We don't necessarily know exactly what it is, but you know you do the best you can with what you've got.